So here is this function, all right? It's crazy. And my, my GP system that I wrote, because I was telling the story about the GP system I wrote, couldn't fit the data. So this, the blue line is the gamma function. It's the gamma function. What did I call it? The lambda function or something? I forgot. OK, gamma function. The blue line is the actual function. The green dots were the data points that I had, like you did, like you do for your assignment. OK? And all the other line colors, the, the red, green, yellow, magenta, cyan, those are different functions that my GP system came up with, trying to fit the data. You can clearly see it doesn't match. Like the red one's clearly the best, right? But it, it makes a bunch of mistakes. But there's actually a thousand data points here. And the data points are restricted between like, I don't know, three and three, maybe? Maybe it's two and a, it looks like it's three and three. So, the red line, the function that defines that red line, that is ugly, is a damn good approximation for this function that I cannot express in this nice, simple little algebraic expression. But I came up with it. It's, it's not that simple, but it's still simpler than anything with crazy recurrence and integrals and stuff. It's a damn good approximation for the, for the range of data that it got, that it saw. So you can see there's a thousand data points. And it looks like it missed this one by a little bit. And then maybe like, OK, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, let's say 10. It missed 1% of the data points. It's pretty damn good, right? The GP says, now, I'm going to warn you, if you, did some, if you tried to fit this with deep, you're, it's not going to work. Because deep is not designed specifically for symbolic regression, and it's missing a lot of things. But, it, but let's say it could, because a GP system can do it. It's remarkable that we're able to fit this data, even though it has no business fitting. The, like, even though it couldn't, it did. Or at least it tried its damn best to. And if, I, if those were the data points I had, if I'm observing something, remember, let's pretend I'm just observing this box that keeps spitting out data. Okay? And I want to understand what that data is. I'm using the math symbols to describe a phenomenon. Remember, we can talk about the philosophy of math, sure. It depends on what point, like, does math exist? No, that's like a question people will say, like, well, okay, well, what is it? Does math, can, you know, we, we can clearly be very constructive from first principles and move up from math to get complex things. But a lot of times in human history, what we would do is we would observe something and be like, but what's happening? And then we came up with fancy symbols to describe it. I have one thing and another thing. Well, now I have two things. Ooh. People observed how long it took for gravity, for things to fall to the earth, right? And with that, they could figure things out like, well, well, okay, so like, what's the relationship in this data in terms of like the mass, the distance, the time, the acceleration? How does, how does this all matter? People observe things and then come up with an expression to describe it. And we know math works because we can do it. And that's how we, you know, we can build our way up to kind of discover things in math that 100 years later we realize is finally useful. The point here is, if I am observing this box that keeps spitting out data, so I know this is the gamma function, but let's pretend it's not. There might be, maybe, the programmer of our universe did write a mathematical expression that was crazy complex that describes how the information pops out of that box. Or maybe we just live in a universe and some information keeps popping out of that box. And for whatever reason, me as a human is going like, what's this? So I, I need to know, because humans have this crazy need to categorize things and understand things. So I have to know. I want, I want to use my math skills. I want to know what symbols I can use to describe the data coming out of that. Because if I can, I know all the data that can come out of it. Like I can suddenly predict the future, right? 
It's the same thing with like linear regression. I know, symbolic regression, same idea. If I say, here is a plot of something, we've got an x and a y, I, you don't even care what it is. This information, this is a model of some phenomenon. Who cares what it is? But if I come along and say, okay, so here's some phenomenon, and you observe x, here, what would you expect? You are not observing that phenomenon. You have never observed this phenomenon before. This is how long it takes widgets to fall from trees in the center of the earth. Okay? And this, this someone figured it out. I don't need to be there. I don't, ever, I don't ever need to be observing that thing. If I've got this, and maybe no one has ever observed this value of x. But if this is accurate, I can say, all right, well, I would expect to get this, right? Let's assume that lines up reasonably well. I can like make a prediction. Like I now know about this. I understand it better because I've got this expression that can describe it. So in this scenario, if I am, if that stuff's spitting out data and I want to get, if all the data points I saw were these, and for whatever reason, that box just doesn't spit anything out that's greater than or less than, greater than three, less than negative three. It just doesn't. I don't truly know, and this is an important idea in science and in modeling, is if I come up with an expression to describe what I see, I don't truly know if, that ex if that's correct. All I can know is, pretty damn good if I can make predictions that are really close. In fact, I'm still not even going to be, like, sure, I 1% I, I was wrong. But really, like, okay, let's count this as close enough, close enough. One, two, three. Three data points have missed out of a thousand. That's pretty damn good. So maybe that expression I come up with, even though I don't really know what it is, I'm trying to reverse engineer the information to see, okay, what are the patterns it's following? Maybe I'm happy with this. Maybe once you go outside that range, it ends up looking way crazier. But that data never comes out, so it doesn't matter. So if you're doing symbolic regression or any form of regression analysis, it's important to remember that one, you are never guaranteed that your result will be what it, you're truly observing. Some system created this data, some box spit out this data, and then I'm modeling it with regression analysis. There is no guarantee at all that the expression you get is going to be the exact same expression that generated that data. What you are almost guaranteed, you can't really guarantee anything with evolutionary computation, but what you are very, 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 very likely to get is an expression that's at least close as hell to what it really is in the range of values that you've observed. This is the idea of, this is where like overfitting and underfitting can come in. If I have data points, let me show you what I mean. If I give you these data points, And I'm looking at the values between like negative two and two or something. What does that look like to you? An upside down parabola, right? So you're like, okay, it's probably gonna be something squared. But as soon as I start giving you more information, suddenly, what, now what does this look like to you? So some repetitive sinusoidal-like curve, right? So, if I was plotting this and the only data I ever saw made me conclude this, if the only data I ever, ever could or would see, fine, whatever, I can do the predictions. But if I'm claiming that this is good for the whole space, I'm in big trouble. 
because I'm way off once we get out here. Any questions about that? Yeah. Has a GP system been developed that you that like can interpret and use integrals, or is that like kind of outside the scope of what we can do like right now? Um, I'm not too familiar, but there's definitely a lot more you can do with GP systems. You can make them recurrent. You can do. I would be. You can make. You could totally make it do integrals if you had a nice function that would just do it. Uh, just because you would add that to your language. And yeah. some of the things that you add to your language, like we saw like addition, multiplication, yeah, those are great and all, but you can define your own functions that you want to be in there. Yeah. An interesting strategy people will do is if I'm fitting some really complicated data, I'll hit run, and maybe I get something that's not great, but I always see this funny little like sub-expression pop up. I might make like a new thing in my library, in my language, that's that specifically that sub-expression. Because it seems like it cares about that. So maybe I'll let it just kind of use it instead of having to re-evolve it every time. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean by recursion uh, in the context of genetic programming here? Like, what would that look like visually? What would, well, all I mean is like functionally. If like your function depends, if f of x depends on f of x minus 1 plus 17 or something, that's like the recurrent relation. That, that's all I need. All right. Now, another cool thing about symbolic regression is if your noise is normally distributed, which it would typically be, it's pretty damn robust against it. Here's the curves I get if I add, I, I, I have a note here that I can't see, but this is like maybe half a standard deviation added it. It's still good. Here's one. Here's like five. Look at this. This is weird, right? But even though it's got that weirdness, the purple curve actually does a pretty damn good job between negative three and three. Just once you go past three, it's going to be way off. Now look at these. These are crazy. The fact that I see this wobble here in the red, and not so much in the yellow, but the, the fact that I see the wobble in the red makes me think that that function is definitely trying to overfit the, the noise now, because it's trying to like catch it. But interestingly, it's not wobbly where it's good. It's only wobbly once it's just all over the place. And you'll notice that the number of data points between like 0 and 1 seem like there's a lot more than there are between like one and two, and then two and three. I'm willing to bet that the data was generated with a non-uniform distribution of data points. It was probably distributed around zero. It probably had like a 2.5 standard deviation or something, and then it generated that. Now look at this. Whoa, and this is like 10 standard deviation noise. But look, it's still actually hitting these data points pretty well. The GP system has no business doing this, but it does. Yeah. Um, would we be interested in punishing outliers more by like, evaluating the like, error rates using like, mean squared error, or would we be better off using like, mean absolute error? You, well, you typically, well, it depends on what you want to do, but with regression analysis, you typically do mean squared error. And then this is, I don't even know what this is. But yeah, okay, clearly this is now trying to overfit pretty bad. All right, so cool applications. Well, there's the whole fMRI stuff that I did. Technically, I'm still doing it. I just haven't done it since 2018. Where you try to find nonlinear relationships in fMRI data. Why? Because everyone else is looking for linear relationships, but we know that the brain's a nonlinear computational system. So it, there must be nonlinearities in there that would be needed to describe what the heck's going on. So we could do something like this, nonlinear regression. Everyone else just is generalized linear model, linear regression. It's boring. Here's another really cool application of GP, is designing circuits. It's really easy because each of those components actually kind of acts as a function on data, on a signal. And then you can evolve circuits to get your desired, from your desired input to your desired output, it becomes a really great system for designing circuits. In fact, 
I don't know, maybe this story is a little apocryphal, I don't know. But the story goes, there, in order to get like a patent, it needs to be like something that someone with sufficient skill in your area wouldn't like just come up with. Like you can't patent like, I patented a linear search. Yeah, everyone can do a freaking linear search, right? Like it needs to be something sophisticated enough. But GP was recreating and inventing all these things that were already like patented. And then it's like, well, GP didn't know anything. <laughs> and it figured it out. It's weird. And then the question became like, well, what if GP designed like, and I can guarantee you that GP has designed circuits that are used somewhere. Who gets the patent? Right? Like I didn't make it. I mean, I, I would want, if I made the GP system do something, I would want the patent. But if someone comes to me and be like, but you didn't make it, I'm going to say, yeah, you're right, I didn't. The robot did. But I made the robot do it, so I don't know, maybe I should, I don't know. It's weird, right? Who, who owns it? Patent robot, I did patent it. I patent the robot, but I can't patent GP. Everybody. Kane. Cool, yeah, I don't know, this is some, maybe amplifier or something, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't remember what this is. It's something to do with DNA. I don't know. That's an outlier. <laughs> oh, evolving artwork. Here's one. And this is more about like turning an apparently very pixelated picture of Mona Lisa into some more abstract thing via some evolutionary process using genetic programming. I imagine they were probably like evolving a set of rules, a program that would modify the image in some systematic way. So yeah. I think that's it for the GP. Yeah. So that's the idea for GP. Yeah. So for the GP, to for example, for this uh, picture, is it to involve an algorithm to make the, 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 the formal one to be to an extra yeah, they'd probably be evolving, yeah, like some system of rules, like a program, the algorithm. It's not the, just the make this picture into the abstract. I, I, I do not believe it's that. Maybe it could be, but it would still be doing it. If I said, like, I have this picture, I want that picture, give me the program that can do that, it would still evolve that program, though. Other questions about GP? Yeah. So in the graph, how can we say that uh, which line is correct? So uh, when the line is overfitting or underfitting, because all lines are correctly fitting with the points, data points. So when we say uh, which line is correct? What do you mean line? Uh, like the in slide 31. On slide 31. Oh, how do I know which one's correct? I don't. Well, th this is the problem with modeling. This is the problem with like anything, right? If I want to come up with a model, I'm a scientist. I want to build a set of my, my magic function that can do what I need it to do. There's no, nowhere ever, unless it's like proven, and I don't mean proven empirically, I mean proven concretely, like mathematically. All I can do, like, I don't know what the gamma function is. I, do, I don't know what it is. Someone gave me this data. I have no concept of the gamma function. If you gave me this data, which is probably absolutely, that's, a night, that's nightmare data, let's be honest. And these are cherry picked results. These are the best ones. Most of them are terrible. How do you even get that? I just looked at the ones that were not as terrible. But let's say I have like not even that noisy of data. And at the end, like I look and I pick the one, like which one would I pick? The answer is, I'd probably base it on some error metric. I'd probably evolve it with mean squared error, but maybe pick, like select my last one with like the absolute error, or maybe like percent error or something. It doesn't really matter so much. But I would pick that. But then again, what I have is not the gamma function. But I don't, like I don't know. This is my best guess because I'm going to blind. And remember, in the realm of things like computational intelligence, this is typically where we're operating in terms of applications, of 
this is what I came up with. And then someone's going to come along and say, prove it. And I'm like, I can't. Because I, I can say it fit the data really well. That's all I can say. So it's always funny, because a lot of computational intelligence people tend to be like, their jobs are much more pragmatic in the sense that, like, I just need something that works. Boom, I did it good, I got this function, great. And someone says, prove it. You can't prove it, how do I know it's good? I go, I don't. <laughs> I know it's good because it got a really low error, and it fits the data really well, and I validated it. Uh, you know, let's assume I did like some form of validation and testing. So I like, yeah, it fits the data really well. That's the best I can do. But at the same time, that's not a limit of, that's not a limit of um, evolutionary computation. This limitation exists everywhere. I mean, you, you all know the story of like classical mechanics. This describes the universe perfectly. And then a hundred years ago, they're like, oh shit, no it doesn't. That does, it only makes sense in this one particular perspective and scale and scope. Quantum mechanics ruined everything. Right? So it's this, just FYI, science is a lot shittier than people think. If you ever hear someone says, well, science says, no. <laughs> I mean, you could say that about some things, but humans are so obsessed with categorizing things that I'm like, well, science says that's a fish. Okay, but it still looks like a frog, I don't know, right? Like, I, I, I'm coming up with a terrible example. I can't think of a good example. Just be careful when anyone's like, well, the science says, well, I mean, okay, just be careful. I mean, it's very common right now. You'll see, oh my gosh, like you'll always, I'm gonna stop recording.